creating cultural awareness and understanding. This is Culture Click. Culture Click is written and produced by KQAL FM on the campus of Winona State University. A moment in time moves swiftly by us as we live our lives. Each of these moments store a snapshot of events, conversations, ideas, and people, but immediately they become the past, and the past only exists in our memories. What happens if we give these memories a voice? If these snapshots in time could talk to us today? Today on Culture Click, we get to hear voices from the past as they talk about life in 1950s Winona. Our first trip down 1950s Winona leads us to the corner grocery store. Well, hello everyone. I am Laura Dorn, and this is my good friend Helen Ferdinand. Now, we're both buried out at Woodlawn Cemetery. In fact, our graves are just one grave apart. And in spite of the fact that we've been there for a while, I think we look pretty good, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were both grocery store owners back in the 1950s, and we're here today to give you an idea what grocery shopping was like back then. I know that might not sound like a lot of fun, but we've got some really interesting things to tell you tonight. Well, you're probably used to all the big stores like Newtown or Walmart or Hy-Vee and Aldi's, and even Quick Trip sells food now. Yeah. Now, do you all shop at these stores? Yeah. Oh, I kind of figured you all did. <laughs> well, now you're used to being able to browse through the aisles, and you can pick out everything from, well, actual food, to things like flowers, plants, prescriptions, eye classes, clothing, office and school supplies, and, geez, even outdoor furniture. But it wasn't like that back in the 1950s. Well, it certainly wasn't. I know that some of you may remember Helen's uh, IGA store, the Dorn IGA over on Huff Street. And then there was the A&P, uh, let's see, the Red Owl. Um, let's see, what else was there? There was the a Piggly Wiggly. Oh, yeah. Piggly Wiggly, how can yeah. you that? That's right. And so um, things just weren't the same as they are now. No. And so um, back in 1955, believe it or not, there were 58 neighborhood stores, mom and pop stores as they're called. And uh, mom and pops, the prior prioritors or the owners of those shops would actually live behind or above their stores. And we did at Ferdinandson's Market over on Minnesota Street. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. People know that one. <laughs> I'm glad. But, um, you know, it was different then because um, the people that owned the stores, we actually, uh, it was really neat because I was trying to think, there were hardly any cars in. I mean, if you owned a car, family owned a car, that was really something, but most people did. So to be able to walk one or two blocks to get the food that you needed, that was really convenient. Oh, it was. Now you could carry the staple items but it was really hard for you to carry the variety that the big stores did. That's right, and you know, I wanted to tell you about Libra and Sons too. Anybody remember Libra and Sons? All you'd have to do is take the list in and they would fill your groceries as you talk to the owner and then bag them and bring them up to the counter and that was really good. And um, so uh, back then, you can even charge your groceries. Does anybody remember charging your groceries? It's not like it is today where you swipe a card, you know. No, we had a pen and a paper and we write your name, what you brought, what the date was, and we put it in the drawer and we'd let it ride. Because back then, maybe dad lost his job or there was illness in the family. So we just let it go as long as we could, but the one thing more, you know what? always got paid. Why? We knew that they would because these people were not only our customers, they were our neighbors and our friends. Now in my store back then you could browse the aisles and pick out whatever you wanted for yourself. Now, how many of you buy ice cream cones today? How much do you pay for an ice cream cone today? Too much. <laughs> well, too much? No, seriously, okay. how, much, how much is a single scoop of ice cream today? Two to three dollars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Probably okay. So. Back in our day, you could buy a whole half gallon of ice cream for just 59 cents. Oh, wow. Now, you probably take your ice cream and your other frozen goods home, right? And you put them in your freezer? 
Back then, most families didn't have freezers. So there were stores like Brojic's Butcher Shop, which was next to Vess's Grocery on 5th and Olmsted. They would rent out freezer space so families could store their foods there. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, but you know what? We had something that the big stores didn't have. That's right, penny candy. We kept them under a glass case in bins where the kids could come in and they could choose one piece of candy, one penny. We had things, go ahead, Laura. Okay. We had root beer bottles or cakes. We had licorice, pixie sticks. Everybody remember those? Yeah. Dots. Remember those? You just peel one off and eat it? Yeah, and two sides. You got okay, I um, <laughs> And we had, oh, this is fun, because I, oh, I love these. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, I like the ribbons. <laughs> these little pop bottles that had liquid in it that was so sweet. And you chew, you chew, you chew. Okay, and we also had uh, necklaces. Candy yeah. yeah. necklaces. And what else we got there, Laura? Bubble That's gums right. cigars. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bubble uh, gums cigars. <laughs> And last but not least, guess what? Candy cigarettes. Candy cigarettes. Yeah, no, we don't we agree that anymore. <laughs> well, some stores even deliver. Do you remember that? Yeah, the groceries. This, this is grocery and you, you brought vests up before. Yeah. Well, they had a son. You know, I can't remember his name. But anyway, he was always getting into trouble. You know why? Because he would always be late delivering groceries to the elderly ladies. Oh, really? Huh? Well, yeah. now, now, that's because when they got there, he just they just loved to talk with him. And so what they did was feed him cookies and milk, and he just sat and listened to their stories. Now, in my store, <coughs> excuse me, <please. laughs> allergy season, <coughs> even though I've been gone for a while. Now, in my store, we often gave away gold bond stamps and green stamps. We also would give away very often complete sets of china. You get one piece a week for 16 weeks. A family could get a complete set for nothing. Okay, now who here would like to win a free television set? <laughs> oh, okay, all right, quite a few. Now back in November of 1955, my store gave away a 21 inch, it was a console TV. But I don't think you're really going to find anything like that happening in the big stores in Monona these days. <laughs> no. Nope. What about green stamps? Did you sell like gold, gold stamps and green, green stamps? Green stamps, yeah. And uh, that was really interesting because, okay, folks, you take these green stamps and you would purchase so many items in the store and they'd give you so many green stamps or gold. Uh, what were they? Well, usually just the green stamps. I don't remember what we did with the gold bonds. I don't stamps. either. No. I just remember <laughs> licking those green stamps <laughs> and, <laughs> and sticking them in the books. Yeah. And then when you had enough books, you would go down to the green stamp store over there on 3rd Street. Yeah. And you'd redeem them, or guess where else? Erickson's gas station. And you could get pots and pans, you could get dishes and glasses, and even toys. That was really neat. Yeah. Now, we also had some specialty stores back then. We had Tushner's Meats and Sophronic Brothers. They were custom meat stores, and they would cut your meat however you wanted it. Now, there's another place that we're pretty sure you've heard of. Ever heard of Blado's Bakery? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much everybody's been there. They were started in 1924, and to this day, they're still considered one of the finest bakeries in yes. the state of Minnesota yeah. today. They are, and you know what? There may be some products that you recognize because they were started back in the 1950s, and they're still on the shelf today, believe it or not. So I'm going to, let's shoot. Let's go, let's go a few minutes. Yeah. Can I start? Go ahead. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Pepperidge Farm Cookies. Okay. Uh, let go my ego, ego waffles. <laughs> yeah. Peanut M&M's. Oh, and Easter time, from marshmallow peeps. <laughs> Ruffles potato chips. And Hagen Doss ice cream. Oh, one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Sure. Now, these products were carried in our stores back then, <clears throat> and you're still going to see them in the stores today. So the next time you go grocery shopping and you see one of these, remember us. It's been really fun sharing stories of the 1950 grocery stores with you, and thank you so much for going grocery shopping. <laughs> Sorry, but we're taking our candy with us. <laughs>
What were the struggles when you were trying to put this thing together? Oh, some of the struggles the committee had during research was just trying to fit um, individual people for the exact decade um, and representing some of the topics we wanted to talk about, like the corner grocery stores and, you know, life at home and bringing those local stories into that, that larger topic of the 1950s decade and what life was like, you know, the, we have like the general ideas of like how Elvis was popular and rock and roll came together, but finding those Winonans that could, you know, relate to that and talk about that. And, you know, also, you know, it sounds kind of horrible, but people who have been dead long enough, we want to, you know, be really respectful of loved ones who are and family members who are still still here and might remember remember those people like grandma, you know, or grandpa who are so it, we try to have some distance between um, when they passed away um, and w when we portray them in the walk. But families were really honored and everybody's been really positive about having their family members in the walk. Um, they remember, you know, especially having people who remember some of these people who were alive not that long ago. So it was a little bit of a challenge and a little bit of a risk to bring history forward that much um, in kind of the near past. Um, but people have loved it. I mean, coming out of the um, performance tonight, people have had some really great comments. And one said, best ever. And a family came from the cities because they had a cousin in there. So it was really neat. Our next stop down 1950s Winona are the local gas stations. Well, I work for Pontiac. I drive a Thunderbird, of course. What are you driving? I drive a Thunderbird. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good taste, good taste, good taste. So. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Miss Kukloff? Good morning. Wolf. It is so nice to see it's you. It's nice to see you. But remember, I remarried years after my first husband, Ben, died. I was Mrs. Minart at the time of my death, but you can call me Mootsie. I, I forget. I, I must introduce you. This is my friend, Clayton Hessing. Uh, he owned the gas station over off of Gilmore Avenue there, kind of where the street comes, a weird little cross from where the high school is now. How do you do, ma'am? Clayton's Mobile. Yeah, we opened in 1952. I lived nearby, so I walked to work, and my entire family worked there. My wife did the books, my sons pumped the gas, and my daughter did the cleaning. Well, and you know, back in 1955, uh, you didn't even have to get out of your car to get fuel, as I recall. Ah, uh, yes. No woman wanted to take off her white gloves and smell like gasoline for hours just to make her car run. A car would pull up and a bell would ring. A uniformed attendant would come out, they'd pump your gas, wash your windows, check your oil and your tires, take your money and bring you your change. Never had to get out of my car. Unless you wanted a soda pop or a five cent popsicle, though we bring you those too if you ask. That's true, that's true. You know, and as I recall, uh, also in 1955, a gallon of gas only cost 29 cents. <laughs> yep, and in 1955, there were 35 gas stations in Winona that were competing for your business. Most of us did service work as well. Miss Kukloff, I mean... Uh, uh, Pete, 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 call me Mutsi. Ma'am, you were a very good customer. I wouldn't want to be disrespectful. Most folks don't stand on all that formality anymore. Well, I tell you, I will never forget. When Mootsy came down to my dealership, I worked for Paul C. Vanables downtown, kind of by where the uh, Chrysler dealership is now. And Mootsy and her... Her uh, brother pulled up in this 1953 station wagon. They were trading in a new Pontiac Tempest. And she paid me the $2,280 all in silver coins. I tell you, there were, there were containers and coffee cans and assorted <laughs> canisters all over the place. I hadn't told anybody, but I'd been saving for years. <laughs> It must have taken a long time to count all that. Oh boy, did it. And I tell you, it took a lot of work to get all that over to the bank, too. <laughs> they sure don't make cars like they used to. That's for sure. In 1955, Ford came out with a Thunderbird. It was a dream car. Great move on Ford's part. Yeah, you know, but 
Uh, in the 1950s, they also came out with the Edsel. Uh, it was named after Ford's only son, who died in 1943. Uh, but it, it, it was produced for four years and sadly was just a complete bust. Ah, uh, the 1950s. Dinah Shore singing, see the USA in your Chevrolet. Families could own two cars and station wagons became increasingly popular. <laughs> in the 50s, big fins were popular on the cars too. And convertibles were coveted because they didn't have air conditioning. You know, something else they didn't have back in the 1950s, seat belts. We didn't even see those until sometime in the 60s. And even then, it wasn't until the 1980s that there were any federal mandates on seat belts. Automatic transmissions, power steering, power locks, air conditioning. It took a lot of work to keep track on how to fix all that. Sure did, sure did. They don't make cars like they used to, I tell you. <laughs> but manufacturers never included extras like these. My, my nephew Al stopped by a while ago and brought me these for old time's sake. Well, here's to old time's sake. Old, old time's time sake. sake. I remember some of the people mentioned how they uh, were, they remembered a lot of the stuff you were covering. And I, I guess that really can really help with some nostalgia trips for people who their whole lives, their childhoods, their teenage years are long behind them. And they, and as much as we, you know, look towards the future, we think the future's gonna hold a lot of stuff. There's still that sense of, I miss how things used to be. And this kind of brings it back for them. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think just remembering, you know, the past and what they've been through and just the changes that have happened over the last, you know, several decades have been amazing with technology and just way life was. And also p comparing some similarities too. I and mean, we're still facing some struggles that um, people faced in the 50s and 60s yet today. And so kind of making those connections relative to today is, you know, kind of appealing to a lot of people. Oh, it is true. No matter how much technology or society advances, there's always the next problem over the horizon. Right. And, you know, and as a community and as humans together, you know, we can overcome that with understanding our past, where we've been, it helps us get moving forward in our future, too. So, Coming up, we have the entertainment of 1950s Winona. Welcome, one and all. It looks like you were a group looking for some good, clean fun. Well, you've come to the right place because we know about entertainment. We certainly do. We were involved in providing community entertainment back in the day. And now, we're not quite a destination spot anymore. What? Do you have your piano ready? My goodness, Mr. St. John. This isn't a theater or a roller rink. And as you can clearly see, there is no piano. Since the talkies came out, I haven't needed to play for a performance for quite some time. That's how I got my start in theater, playing piano for the silent films. I'm a little rusty now. Nevertheless, the show must go on. Are you ladies ready? I'm ready for anything. Roll the film. All right, can you help us out with a drum roll, please? Let me introduce Mrs. Albert William Smith, Sr. Lois. I'm honored to see you all here today. And this is Paul Bird. Hello, I'm Beulah Bird. Welcome. And I'm Manly St. John, owner and operator of Redding's <coughs> Roller Rink in Winona at 2nd and Liberty Street from 1945 to 1957. We charged 30 to 35 cents for an evening of skating, and we even had some free skating on Wednesdays for beginners. And the special parties sponsored by youth groups. We did a lot of those. And didn't you also offer an indoor roller rink down at the Hurry Back Billiard Room so that all of us could roller skate in the winter? Yeah, it was a great place to hurry back. There was that billiard room, there was the bowl, there was a barber shop, a cigar shop, my roller rink, and Kelger's bowling, and we all shared the same building. We know all about sharing, don't we, Beulah? We certainly do. My husband Paul managed the State Theater. It was the largest theater in town. It was originally built in 1926 as the Apollo and had seating for over 1,100 people. And it had the most gorgeous balcony. And yes, we shared film with the other three theaters in town. That's right. The Avon on East 3rd, 
the West End on West 5th, and my husband Al managed the Winona Theater right across the street from your state theater on Johnson. Hey, you know, I remember there was a hula hoop concert contest at the State Theater in 1958, wasn't there? There was. It was the most fun contest. <laughs> and we showed all the amazing movies of the 1950s. Epics like The Ten Commandments and The Road. And great comedies like Gentlemen Prefer Blondes in 53 and Some Like It Hot in 1959 with Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> We also had kid-friendly movies like Disney's Lady and the Tramp in 1955. And let's not forget the musicals, The King and I in 57, and Elvis's movie, Love Me Tender, that same year. Elvis. <sighs> <coughs> Excuse me, ladies. Back to her, please. <laughs> what about the Skyview drive-ins? That's right. My husband, Al, was so excited to bring the Skyview Drive into the area. It was built where Suds and Duds is now. And there was room for 500 cars at the Skyview. You watching the car, a movie from the comfort of your own car. You didn't even need to buy a babysitter because the kids, they could just fall asleep in the back seat. We showed romance on the high seas with Doris Day opening night. And kids, they would sometimes sneak in the, into the drive-in with in the trunks of cars to get in free. <laughs> we tried to get around that by having book a car night or Buick night, sponsored by Walls Buick. If you showed up in a Buick, you got in for free. My goodness, we sure had a lot of great theaters back in the day. And fun skating. And drive-ins for more than just root beer. <laughs> and, and we've enjoyed reminiscing all of it with you. So thank you for joining us as we remember our role in... Winona, Winona in, in the 1950s. 1950s. May I ask what other subjects you covered in the last couple of years? Oh gosh, we've done the river and... Um, downtown business owners, we've done people who are associated with street names in Winona, um, all sorts. We've one of, A favorite that we've done twice is scoundrels, scandals, and skullduggery, so kind of the seedier side of our history is always fun to do, and people, people love those stories. So, um, yeah, you know, any where from a time and an era to a specific topic like life along the river and it's it's been challenging and fun to play into those larger topics with people who are buried in woodlawn we end our trip down 1950s winona with a focus on the local schools stand up tall sis be proud mr bocker you always say that <laughs> no, there's no slouching in Jefferson School. No, we don't do that in Jefferson. Who are those other teachers? I'm supposed to be meeting with them with uh, Principal Mitchell down in his office, but they're nowhere to be found. They already went to Mr. Mitchell's office, Mr. Bachler. Oh, they did. Well, there's going to be a, a lot of fun or trouble happening with that. Oh, Mrs. Hadler, I was just thinking about how fast this school year has gone. You sure are right, Irv. This school year is going by so fast. Oh, Janice, what a pretty dress. How's your school year going so far? So far good, but I wish I could ride the bus to school. Then I could have lunch there. That's where the fun seems to be. Oh, Janice, you only live a couple blocks away, and your mother is such a good cook. Who's your teacher this year? Mrs. Tamber. <gasps> Sixth grade already? Like Mr. Bockler said, where has the time gone, Anna? Next year, I should go upstairs and wear those dumb gym class uniforms and the showers and the locker rooms. At least I don't have to drink that warm milk left outside of our classroom door every day. Oh, boy. No warm milk, I guess, Janice. Uh, classes won't always be in the same rooms. You'll have different teachers. You'll make new friends. This year, this year I have to go upstairs. No. You go to Central? You go to you go to junior high school at Central, or where are you going to be going to junior high school? I'm going to okay. <laughs> right. So at Jefferson, we stay in the same building, right? right? Yeah. Do all schools do that? No, but Madison. Right. Where do Madison? Where do they go? They go. They go downtown to the big building, Broadway. Oh. 
You're going to love junior high school, though. Yeah, with, uh, with Mr. Pluckett's chorus, his band, his orchestra, um, dances, and, and basketball. In girls' basketball, we only can run halfway down the court. Must think we can't run the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> Someday they'll learn. I still remember you sitting on the floor in my first grade class reading stories. You had just graduated Miss Grousnick's kindergarten. I love to read figuring out numbers, words, poems. Uh, especially love that machine that could record your voice about some vinyl records. We thought that was magical. Oh, yes, that would be an antique today. There's much more efficient ways to record. I'm glad you liked it, though. I had fun with it, too. In sixth grade, we're kind of the bosses, now over the little kids. <laughs> we get to read real books and go to the library each trip to pick out a special book. P.E. is outside, lots of fun. The boys chase us around, or we play on the drum the gym. In winter, we dance in the gym or play fun gym games inside. What do you think of those fire drills? I hate fire drills. Even worse, the ducking cover drills. We run into the hall, punch them on our knees, and cover our heads to protect us from the atomic bombs fired by the Russian communists. <laughs> really scary. Would that keep us safe? Uh, let's, let's hope so. Let's, <laughs> let's change the topic off of the no, atomic bomb. But, um, I was just thinking that the last time I saw you, Janice, was right before Christmas break. How was your vacation? It was good. Right before, too. Parties in the class, assembly in the gym. At home, we got, we got, I got presents, and I, I, I could, I slided in the snow. No. But I had to shovel the snow, so I'm happy to be back. All that good learning, too, that you probably missed, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Coming out numbers, poems, we're learning manners, and we get to have a field trip. Oh, <laughs> have a field trip this year. I heard the junior high was have a fart machine, but they oh my the back of their chairs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to get going because I, myself, and Miss Travernick are taking Teresa Springer down for her eye appointment. Janice, you know Teresa, don't you? Yes, we were classmate friends, and Mrs. Travernick was our teacher last year. Oh, well, I will tell Teresa and Miss Travernick hello for you. Okay, goodbye, Janice. Goodbye. Goodbye, sis. Tell me, Irv, what did Mr. Mitchell do with those boys caught smoking behind the football shed? <laughs> or the ones that accidentally dropped Mrs. Adams' flower pots out her second story window? <laughs> or the ones that put glue on the library cards so when our librarian tried to pick them up, they ripped apart? Mrs. Hadler, you know, boys will be boys, especially those young teenage boys. What are you going to do? But they got their comeuppance. They have to go after school to a Harvey Gordon shop, and they're not allowed to play sports for a number of weeks. They were just very glad that Cal Hoff didn't catch them. Oh, I yeah. bet, yes. All right, well, Irv, I'll see you later. See you. Bye-bye, Mrs. Okay. It's going to be okay. We just got um, finished with an assembly, um, and Principal Mitchell told us that um, Mrs. Hadler, who you met, and Miss Travernick were killed in a car train accident yesterday afternoon while they were taking Teresa Springer to her eye appointment. Teresa Springer is in the hospital right now and not expected to survive. It's all right. That was one of the saddest memories, really, within the, within the school at Jefferson. That happened in March of 1956. But for the most part, the memories were very were fun, okay, very fun. Uh, a lot of good learning going on, um, a lot of good natured teasing, and sometimes they're naughty, but for the most part, it was a, it was a, a, a good time to, uh, to be raised up. Um, the schools in Winona in the 50s were the center of the community, still are. And we can just be thankful that all those kids got such good educations that they made Winona what it is today. So thank you. Well, I'd like to thank you for doing this interview with me. And uh, I really hope this continues. It was an amazing experience. 
Well, great. We hope so, too, and Mm. plan to have another 20 years plus. Thanks again to the Winona Historical Society for performing their Voices from the Past event and being on today's Culture Click. To learn more about Winona History or the Voices from the Past event, go to winonahistory.org. To keep up with all things Winona and the surrounding community, tune in to Culture Click, Thursdays at 12.30 right here at 89.5 KQAL. I'm Giovanni Bermudez. Creating cultural awareness and understanding. You've been listening to Culture Click. Support for Culture Click is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Culture Click is produced by KQAL FM on the campus of Winona State University. For more information, look us up on the web at kqal.org. And thanks for listening to Culture Click.